The polls have shifted a little bit. Polls in the presidential race are tightening. Shocking new poll. Can any of that really tell us what may happen in November? The latest polls have definitely pulled me in, and they are at the heart of today's breaking story. The optics for Kamala Harris have been great this week, but do they translate mathematically to a clear path for her to win in November? In just a minute, you'll find out, and I think you're likely to be surprised by what the experts are saying. While having my coffee this morning, I was looking at articles in my newsfeed, and two in particular caught my eye, because content-wise, they were in the same neighborhood, but source-wise, they were miles apart. In the red corner, but really the blue corner, we have CNN with a headline that read, Scholar who has correctly predicted nearly every presidential election since 1984 explains which party he thinks will win. And in the blue corner, but really the red corner, we have the Fox Network interviewing Karl Rove, frequent contributor, giving his opinion on who's leading. So I watched them both and said, well, that's interesting. The juxtaposition is fascinating and is my story for you today. I'll play both of the clips for you in a minute, but you definitely want to see the scholar's video because his formula is science-based and his record is mind-boggling. So what do you think? Will Fox and CNN remain miles apart or will they share common ground? First up on Fox is political strategist Karl Rove with his dry erase board and marker from 1994 and a prediction about 2024. Carl, it seems like Kamala Harris has a little momentum right now. Well, you're absolutely right. The race has tightened. Uh, and think about this. This is pretty significant. If you take a look at the real clear politics average, the race, which was approaching a three point advantage for Trump over Biden uh, before the debate, uh, is now a 1.2 point difference between Trump and Harris in the latest real killer politics. And there's one outlying poll in that. There are 10 polls. And if you take that one outlier out of the poll, then Trump is ahead by eight tenths of a percent. I would not be surprised to see Harris in the lead at the end of the Democratic convention. Uh, but th this race is far from over for either side. And they, 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 let's remember who we're going after. We're going after undecided voters and w people who are weakly linked to their choice are weakly linked to the idea of even turning out to vote. And those people are concerned about things that affect them directly. They're concerned about the economy. They're concerned about inflation. They're concerned about where America stands in the world. Mm. And candidates need to be, Trump needs to go back on the offense on those issues. This whole issue of is she an Indian American or a black American and how does she identify? This is a loser. Loser? I think that was a bit of a Freudian slip there at the end. You're the sucker. You're the loser. But aside from that, weren't you surprised that a mouthpiece for the Republican Party offered such a gloom? Me forecast for Trump and now for CNN and their expert. The CNN angle is very different because their expert is neutral, not biased. He is American history professor and historian Alan Lickman, who has made a bit of history of his own with his predictions. Does his data support what Rove said, or will CNN and Fox once again find themselves in opposite corners? Let's find out. Let's bring in Al Lickman, presidential historian, distinguished professor at American University. Al, you're known for, for your 13 keys uh, to predicting who's going to win the White House. You've correctly predicted nearly every presidential winner since 1984. Uh, not going to tick through all the keys here, but, but what stands out to you in terms of what's happened in the last three weeks, particularly as Kamala Harris has become the Democratic nominee? What is so amazing is how little has changed on the keys. The keys are the North Star. They're not affected by any of these campaign events. The keys tap into the structure of how presidential work elections work as votes up or down. With Biden stepping down, they lose the incumbency key. But the Democrats finally got smart and united around Kamala Harris. And that means they preserve the contest key. So they've only lost one key, which still puts the Democrats in a good position for re-election. So there you have it. Mark this day down as monumental because Fox and CNN and their respective experts find themselves on the same page at this moment in time. And while I and maybe you too have been celebrating a blue surge, Lickman says not so fast. The forecast was actually the same with Biden. A lot would have to go wrong for them to lose, which I've been saying for months, and none of these campaign events change that whatsoever. You know, what's interesting is if you, if you spoke to Democrats, they felt like 
the president was in a bad position. Uh, clearly, the president kind of concluded that on some level as well when he decided uh, to drop out. You, you were saying the day before he dropped out, like the, based on your keys and how you're looking at the race, what you're saying about individual events not shifting things, that he had a very good chance to win. Absolutely, because he secured both the incumbency key and the contest key. Look, I'm not a physician. I'm not going to comment on his mental or physical health, which could operate outside the keys. But leaving that aside, he secures those two keys. That means six of the remaining 11 would have had to fall to predict his defeat. Extremely unlikely. Harris secures one of those two keys, but now five of the remaining 11 keys would have to fall to predict her defeat. Very unlikely. She's also helped the Democrats on the third party key, making it less likely that people will look to uh, RFK Jr. And with Biden out of the campaign spotlight, that would make it less likely there's going to be any kind of massive social unrest through protests. This is a very good day for Democrats, but we have to remember that this period of time with Harris ascending to the top of the ticket is described as the honeymoon phase, and the bump in the polls was very predictable. But these are unique times, and the word bump has been replaced by the word momentum by many. And that momentum has to sustain us across the finish line because on November 5th, it doesn't matter what Rover Lickman think, it only matters who turns out to vote. In closing, I want to play Lickman's final thought just for fun as he describes some nerd drama between himself and renowned statistician and pollster Nate Silver. And while you're listening to that, please comment below with your thoughts about the predictions you've heard today. And I'm also curious about your favorite cable news source. Are you loyal to a particular news channel or network? Or are you promiscuous like me and get a little news here, get a little news there? I'm Dan, and I'll see you next time, and together let's occupy democracy. Before I let you go, I, I got to ask, because I've been following with interest, um, you and Nate Silver, the statistician known for his own elect uh, election forecasting, don't seem to get along, at least on social media. W what's, the, what's the deal with you guys? Really simple. The keys can fall into place early. In 2010, I predicted that Barack Obama would get reelected and that, you know, in a very difficult to prove to predict election out of the blue, a 30 page attack on me saying you can't predict this early. Being a professor, I responded to my own 30 page response, which boiled down to the idea I can, but you can't because I tap into the structure of elections. You look at ephemeral polls, which are useless at this point. I think ultimately Nate came around to agree with me. I wrote him a very nice email saying, let's write a joint article about how two different uh, predictors came around to the same viewpoint. Never heard a thing from him. He's a clerk. He just compiles polls and then he comes up with these phony probabilities, which are not based on real probabilities. Hillary Clinton has a 78% chance or so to win. Then she loses and he says, see, I told you she had a 20%, 22% chance to lose. He can never be right and he can never be wrong because he lives and dies with the ephemeral polls. It, it, is, a, it is a very real beef.